share with me as I'm doing that. So, okay, perfect. Uh, so we are here uh, with the Wikimedia Foundation Research Award of the Year part of the workshop. Um, this is uh, the um, uh, this is the moment that we are going to reflect back and celebrate some of the most recent research that is done on or about the Wikimedia projects that we, we believe is going to have high impact on the projects. Um, Benjamin Mako Hill is going to run this session and Jimmy Wei is with us, is with us on the call and uh, he is going to be the award presenter. I'm going to pass the mic uh, to Mako to pick it up from here. Mako. All right, can you hear me? Good. We can. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right. So you'll control the slides. So uh, let's get started. So uh, I am very excited to be able to do this for, gosh, how many, this is the third or the fourth year that we've given the award. Um, uh, but uh, uh, it, we will be sort of uh, giving the award for the sort of, it's a little bit of a backronym, the WMF Ray Award, the research Award of the Year for 2004. And the goal of this award is to recognize some really just like, and celebrate some really fantastic work that has been done uh, um, in the previous year that uses Wikimedia data to sort of understand and improve uh, Wikimedia projects and the broader sort of web uh, ecosystem and to answer critical sort of open research questions, um, really exemplary, work uh, of the kind of stuff that, you know, you've been seeing uh, here at the workshop um, already today. Um, the the um, the award is chosen by a two-person committee that consists of Lila, who of course you've heard from today, and myself. Um, and uh, sort of to be eligible for the award, the work, uh, well, it needs to be um, sort of uh, on or about uh, Wikimedia um, or importance of Wikimedia projects. It needs to be published in the previous year. Um, it needs to be uh, have a copy of the manuscript available in English so that Leila and I can uh, read it. I think it's the only language we have in common. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, and there can't be a conflict of interest, so we can't, of course, you know, give I can't get the award to the to one of my students, for example, um, uh, uh, or a collaborator. Um, we review a whole bunch of work. So um, Kinneret, who you've also sort of heard from, has uh, you know, like like sort of helped put together a list that and there's been actually a, a whole bunch of people within the community have also collected as well. Um, so we basically have a public call for nominations. So quite a few people actually sort of submit examples of uh, research that they were really excited about that they felt was really impactful. Um, we go through uh, all the research that is um, tweeted out by the Ricky Research uh, sort of um, account on X, of which there are, are um, uh, hundreds of uh, examples each year. And then we also do sort of a systematic search to make sure that we haven't, um, uh, you know, that there was not something that, 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 that we missed by doing, doing searches in the normal sort of way in which we search for papers. So we try to do a systematic work uh, uh, um, sort of look not just for the the you know both with both a sort of push and a pull all right so uh this year we're going to be giving the award to to an even two different awards um uh um the first award is what we're calling the sort of like the the wfra sort of best paper award and then the second award is going to be the best uh is the wfa wmf ray best student paper award which we're giving to recognize um uh you know a a paper that was written by a researcher who was a student at the time in which they conducted the the, the research. All right, uh, go to the next slide. There, um, there is. Uh, this is not just a sort of a. Uh, there's a physical award. It's not just a uh, an intangible award. Um, we actually uh, uh, there's a certificate. But we also send people a physical award. So you guys have. Uh, uh, many of you know, uh, if you if you study, if you're a Wikimedian uh, or if you study Wikipedia, um, uh, you might know that Wikipedians um, and Wikimedians often give each other virtual awards called Barn Stars, and they're pictures of these physical objects which people use to kind of hold barns together. Um, uh, and there are physical Barn Stars, um, and every once in a while, uh, Wikipedians will actually give each other these physical awards as well. Um, someone gave me one many years ago, uh, and I still like treasured and actually have it on my desk 
um, at home. I'm actually traveling right now, uh, but uh, but I have it and I sort of see it and touch it every day. It really means a lot to me. So we'll be actually sending physical barn stars to the um, the first author of each of the sort of winning research groups or another person on their team that they choose. And we'll be in contact about, uh, about physical mailing addresses um, as well. Uh, so um, uh, I think that with that sort of introduction and description of the award aside, I'm going to turn it over to uh, to, to to Jimmy Wales. We'll be sort of uh, who's agreed for uh, I, I, now, as he has for several years, agreed to help sort of present these awards. And the process is going to be that um, uh, the Jimmy is going to introduce um, each of the sort of papers that's going to be receiving the awards. And then we're going to, uh, uh, I'll invite everyone to sort of unmute and uh, clap in that kind of awkward way that we are used to doing on Zoom. Uh, and then we'll invite the authors of the paper to uh, to speak and say a few say a few words as well. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy. Mm. Okay, great. Thank you. This is um, one of my favorite things uh, to do every year. Uh, my other favorite thing is to give out the awards at Wikimania, um, which of course um, is a long, long tradition. And it's uh, for me, it's a great privilege um, in my role, um, it's one of my favorite things is the ceremonial aspect of thanking people uh, for all the amazing intellectual work that they're doing. So let's get started here with the first paper, which is one that um, I was really excited to see when it came out personally. Um, so one of the major challenges of large language models is hallucination. Uh, we all know this. You've used ChatGPT and it hallucinates. Uh, the model, you know, they offer text or responses that sound plausible and based on logic, but in reality, they are not. Which, of course, is almost like if you just if you just imagined your worst possible Wikipedia vandal, this would be it. It's not the one who puts in nonsense. It's the one who puts in stuff that's completely made up and sounds plausible. So finding a way to stop large language models from hallucinating is incredibly important for the world in the next uh, coming decades. Uh, and there's been rapid, extensive research over the past two years to better understand and curb LLM hallucination. The winner of this year's WMF Ray is a paper that offers the first few shot LM, LLM based chatbot that almost never hallucinates. It's grounded in English Wikipedia and the model has 97.9% .9 factual accuracy in conversation with human users on recent topics, which is 55% better than GPT-4. Beyond the impressive technical achievements, the paper highlights a topic of high importance for us as Wikimedians and the broader AI community. High quality human curated and managed content is critical for LLMs to be useful. What I always joke is, I, I really wouldn't wanna to talk to a chatbot that was trained only on Elon Musk's Twitter. Um, hopefully they'll be trained on things that Wikipedians wrote because they're much, uh, much smarter than the average uh, ranting lunatic. The research highlights the importance of Wikipedia, the work of Wikipedia contributors, and the quality content in English Wikipedia. For all these reasons, we award this year's first WMFRA 2024 Best Paper Award to WikiChat, Stopping the Hallucinations of Large Language Model Chatbots by Few Shot Grounding on Wikipedia. All right. Um, so I want to invite everyone to uh, to to sort of we can unmute and clap uh, for the authors. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Um, and so I think that uh, now we have at least, I think I saw at least two people from the authorship team who uh, are here who have joined. So uh, you should please, they should, uh, um, I don't know if you, if you want to, I think that the, what we'll do is we'll have them uh, un, uh, like turn their video on and then we can... <laughs> Let's see how we do this. Uh, no, turn the video on and then we will... It's the, it's the Zoom equivalent of coming on stage. That's correct. Yeah. This is the Zoom I equivalent was actually going to ask um, if, uh, Kinneret, if you can put uh, at least Monica and Sina on uh, Spotlight. I don't know if it works out as I'm sharing the oh, screen. Oh, that looks great. To stop. Hello, Monica. Um, Perfect. Hi. And then we'll yeah. do a... <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to say... If... I just wanted to say a few things. So thank you for this award. This is a great honor for me and, and my amazing co-authors. Uh, Professor Lam is also here. Uh, and so this research was uh, focusing on making large language models more trustworthy. And we think Wikipedia and Wikidata are a very important of part, of, part of making it happen. 
especially like using Wikipedia and Wikidata for our research because they are scale presents some interesting challenges for AI systems. And because they are full of long tail knowledge, which large language models often struggle with, um, we sometimes say if our method works on Wikipedia, then it will probably work on other things as well. So uh, that's another motivation for us. And I uh, just want to add that since we have um, published the Wikichat paper, we have been expanding it. Now it can pull information from Wikipedia text tables and info boxes from 10 Wikipedia languages, like English, Spanish, Chinese, Farsi, and so on. And we will soon release a version that taps into Wikidata as well. Uh, so that's very exciting for us. And this is ongoing research for us. So please do let us know how we can make it more useful for the community. It is available online at uh, wikichat.gd.stanford.edu if you want to give it a try. So thank you again. All right. Uh, thank you. And I guess we'll take a take a photo. Is that how we do this? We all. <laughs> Okay, I'm not doing anything, but hopefully <laughs> get rid of someone else. <laughs> Leila's got somebody's it. screenshot. <laughs> I think Bob is the screen John, taker. John, perfect. Okay. perfect. John. okay, very good work. Thank you. <laughs> very good. <laughs> okay, right. fantastic. Great. So, so thank you so much. So, all right, uh, all right. Let's uh, let's move on to the. The, the the second award for the for the best student paper Jimmy okay fantastic yeah so for the the best student paper this year uh the paper has a single author um who was a graduate student when the work was conducted and published um, that single author piece is going to become really important in just a minute it's perhaps worth noting that the work was published in one of the very best journals in political science that as far as we can tell has never published a paper about a Wikimedia project. The paper identifies a subtle but important way that the English Wikipedia has improved over time and provides detailed evidence for how this happened in particular. In particular, the author of this paper did a deep qualitative reading of the full edit histories of 63 articles on controversial topics like homeopathy, global warming, the relationship between race and intelligence, vaccine hesitancy, and so on. Now, I remind you, this was a single person who read all of that and trust me, having read a lot of these controversial art articles myself, that's a very brave thing to do. Uh, the paper showed that Wikipedia evolved in, in the degree to which it has given space to fringe theories on these topics. For example, to people arguing that homeopathy is an effective medical practice. In the process, the author showed that English Wikipedia has become increasingly reliable in the degree to which it reflects scientific consensus on these topics. Beyond this, the work identified a process through which this occurred. Essentially, there's often conflict between editors promoting and opposing fringe viewpoints. These conflicts are made possible by ambiguous rules, such as what constitutes a reliable source. In general, the interpretations of the rules being argued for by the anti-fringe groups have tended to be successful. On average, the losers of these arguments, again, mostly the fringe people, have been less likely to stick around Wikipedia. Over time, the body of editors reflected the winners of these conflicts and the precedent and rules reflected the outcome. The study also presented quantitative evidence that this is how the process unfolded in English Wikipedia. It also contributes an answer to a major puzzle in political science about how political change happens by using Wikipedia as a sort of laboratory with a uniquely granular archive of data on process. The paper uses a range of methods to answer important social scientific questions. The answer serves as an important insight for Wikipedians, as well as providing an important contribution to political science more broadly. For me, I think well, one of the things that struck me about this is how this description of this process within Wikipedia is, in my view, an idealized description of how a uh, process process should happen, how progress should happen across all intellectual disciplines, uh, that people are debating and they've got certain parameters. And over time, it's not just like who's the loudest and who's the noisiest. It's like, what are the actual rules? And how do we think about what makes something reliable or not? And see if the various arguments actually map to uh, processes and techniques that we agree are rational and, and more likely to yield truth. And so that this goes on within Wikipedia, great. And if it goes on in the wider world, great. This is how we can progress. For these reasons, we award this year's WMF Ray 2024 Best Student Paper Award to Rule Ambiguity, Institutional Classes, and Population Loss, How Wikipedia Became the Last Good Place on the Internet. Um, hooray. All right. 
Okay, so I think that we can uh, like we can we can unmute and clap yeah. awkwardly on Zoom together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, so um, so the author of this paper, Svera Steinson, uh, was actually was was unable to be uh, to to join us today. I mean, these, you know, we make these decisions relatively late, and I think that uh, sounds like Svera has some other. Uh, um, Sort of issues that prevented him being able to be here, but we've been able to communicate on email in the last um, few days. Uh, and in addition to expressing, uh, I don't know, like, uh, um, an unhappiness with not being able to be here today, um, uh, uh, Sfer said that uh, he'll be able to um, watch this video so we can all uh, <laughs> wave <laughs> to him now and also pass on a little a message for, for me to read. So I'll do that now. Um, Sfer says, Thank you. It is a huge honor to receive the Best Student Paper Award as part of this year's uh, Wikimedia Foundation Research Award of the Year. It means a lot to me to, to be recognized by the Wikimedia Foundation and by fellow researchers who seek to understand how Wikipedia operates. Wikipedia is one of the most important institutions in the world, and it is exciting to see so many scholars across diverse fields build cumulative knowledge uh, about this groundbreaking institution. Thank you once again. So. Um, uh, we're sorry that you couldn't be here as well, um, but thank you for your excellent work, uh, Sfer, and we're glad that we, you could, we could uh, recognize you with the award and that you could participate in this way as well. So um, I suppose there's not, uh, we can not, not as much value in the, in the, the group photogra <laughs> photograph if the key person is not able to be here, but uh, yeah. uh, I think that uh, well, I'm glad that we got to recognize the, the, the excellent work here. And I will say maybe just as a, uh, that, that I think that, that, uh, it's it's just a joy to be able to read through all the work that is being that, that has been produced um, each year, and this decision is tough. Uh, there is so much excellent work, including some of the so much of the work that is here, and I think that uh, you know that that that. that you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of you who've done really really excellent work that should be recognized with the award like this. And if we could give them, if we could give a big a big pile of them, I think that 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 we would absolutely do that. But um, uh, congratulations to 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 this year's um winners. Uh, and I think that thanks Jimmy for being able to be here and uh, recognize uh, uh these people again. Really appreciate it. So great, congratulations everybody. Thanks. Okay, so I think that that's my that's that's my part of the program. I'll pass it back to you, Leila. Cool. Thank you so much, and congratulations, everyone. Um, I'll pass it to the next folks. Please take.